my name is Maria Kyung, and um, I've been dealing for past 11 years in Chinese works of art, particularly in scholars' objects. This is my gallery. I chose um, a more intimate setting. With a scholar, the literati lifestyle it demands um, a, small a small intimate space where you can um, where you can focus on the pieces, you can focus on conversation. It was the lifestyle of how it was back in the 17th century. A scholar's objects is one of the only um, fields, like niche fields in Chinese art where you can um, it's made to be handled. It, it, it was made as an object um, that you're supposed to hold in your hands and then appreciate. It's not what the market portrays the um, scholar's objects to be, which are mainly um, woods and bamboos. That, that doesn't make up the entire table. There's, there's a, all sorts of other materials that are involved between lacquers, um, uh, jades, um, bronzes, um, ivory, agate, it covers different materials all across the board. It's an opportunity to gel everything together. Instead of feeling as though I have a bit of everything, especially the way that the catalogue is um, put together, it feels more like a curated collection. That attracts a lot of uh, dealers, uh, dealers, collectors, um, and, and also museum people because uh, it helps them focus. It gives them also a different interpretation every year on what um, scholars objects are. There are a lot more fakes than there are real pieces, I, I do admit. If you compare it to contemporary art, because contemporary art, whether it's Chinese or otherwise, it's uh, easy starting point. You don't need to be really worried about what's real or what's fake. But for antiques, it goes one uh, many steps further actually because you do have to worry about the authenticity. Just because you see something that's slightly similar to something that you saw in a museum, it doesn't mean that, that that's really the, the actual um, piece or, or a, a very similar example. 